Hello, everybody. It's a great pleasure to have this panel today. We will have the opportunity to talk about the new technologies, the new trends that we have in digital transformation. And it's a great honor for me to have uh, today Gonzalo Garcia. Gonzalo Garcia is uh, in Cemex. Uh, it's a big cement company in Mexico, but it has operations in, in many countries worldwide and he's in the digital transformation area. Also, we have Miguel. Miguel also was Exotech from EGADE as, as Gonzalo, and he is in Pemex, which is a, a, the petroleum company in Mexico, one of the biggest worldwide also, and he has a, a lot of digital transformation projects. So welcome, welcome Gonzalo, welcome Miguel. And for sure, we have David. David is in charge of digital transformation from Artexa. It's a Mexican company that is focused in all the solutions about the hotels, restaurants, and even the, the houses. So it's 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 also a, a, a big market that that David has uh, as challenge. So well, let's let's start. For sure, digital transformation is a very broad content. And, and we are talking about not just marketing, but also efficiency and how to embrace IT uh, services. So uh, first of all, I, I will ask you, uh, Gonzalo, uh, what do you think about the new trends, the new technologies? Uh, are you applying uh, one of uh, them that you have any example or please feel free to, to share us. Thank you. Thank you, Fernando, and thank you, everyone. Regarding the emerging technologies, uh, a recent example that I was thinking that is being applied in CEMEX is related to RPAs or what it means robotic process automation. And a simple definition will be that before the RPA, you used to have a person placing orders through a web console or to a type of console. Now, instead of a person putting the order, you have a robot that is putting that order. Now, you have a lot of advantages, like it's less time, the one that the RPA takes compared to the one that the person takes. Usually the number or, of errors or the mistakes that the RPA do are fewer compared to the one of the person. And it sounds very good and very promising. Now, there's a counter effect or uh, not a very positive side of the story and is the human side and, and that human side means that at the end if you start putting more rpas instead of hiring people that means that you are hiring less people and those that were, were hired to do that specific task now a robot is the one that is doing it. so at the end you are cutting off some jobs that's a complex part it's part i believe of the changes related to technology and it's something that everyone should everyone will be facing Absolutely. Please, Miguel, if you could share us. Yep. Thank you. So yeah, I was expecting David will take this one, but yeah. Well, in my case, uh, I would like to say that the company is approaching like new technologies and new efforts. But since it's a government corp uh, corporation, uh, processes require like more uh, steps to be like validated. So in this case, I, I would like to say that sometimes clients will tell you we need to face like digitalization, but we have limited budget and we can maybe approach what we have. So in this case, sometimes you have to look like what the company has, like as a consultant in digital transformation and see like, how can I optimize like, uh, I don't know, like a website or a cloud service to approach this digital transformation in the company? Uh, yeah, I think I would like to say like the, the company is like approaching several, but in this case, sometimes you will face like they will tell you like you have to optimize what we have. We have limited resources, but you can do like a lot of things with creativity and also you can suggest or look to, I don't know, like maybe security and try to like to understand what can you apply to, to this di digital transformation process. Absolutely. David. Okay. And it on the other hand, we have this uh, trend about the data analytics, data trend, that it's like uh, something huge that all companies are using right now. 
So as a leaders, I encourage all people to think about what is the next step, to think in a strategic way. And the best way to think in a strategic way is to analyze this data. And it's a trend that is very useful in the digital transformation. So to think about the next step and to do it right, we have a lot of tools, uh, data analytic tools, that can help us to take the, be the best decision for our company in, in order to be the best up in the next generation. So it, it's a trend that I will encourage that all people in, in different industries can take a look about big data, data analytics, data trends. And yes, uh, hopefully our industry uh, gave us external data but also the internal data can help a lot to take the next step or the next decision i want to complement what david said and, and the emerging technology of big data or data mining is one of my favorite ones first of all because just talking uh, about that data is something that has existed a long time ago now the trend or the tendency is that the organizations start seeing that data as an important, important asset for the company. Now, once the company or the person or whoever realizes what you can do and achieve with that data is when this boom start coming. But, but then that final part is very complex because you need to start moving from what you were used to do time ago or just having some records in your local hard drive or, or probably in a paper to now start having it available to broader users inside the company and then there's a cultural part i think a very important component when talking about digital transfor transformation or any m tech needs to be hand in hand with this human side so how you move the culture of from the organization that they the employees start realizing the importance of that data and what they can achieve and, and they can achieve a lot of things i mean you have a lot of information about the profile of your customers or your end users Yes, and all these data analysis can lead to a change of the business model of the company. And there's where the the change management uh, takes a very important role because data can give us like, what is the strategic path to achieve any goal? And maybe it's not the same path that the company has followed for the last 30 years. So it's important to uh, analyze and know how to change direction in the right time so the company can can keep looking forward for for the next steps yeah i think you're like really right david i think it's really important to have the strategic but also like have like set realistic goals before the strategy mm -hmm. and also the measure of how you will measure this strategy is always important like uh, we were talking in other panels, you will need to face like in parts, right? Or in phases, how this transformation will go. Uh, like in this case, uh, you need like also in, uh, have like a really deep research about the technologies you can apply because maybe you can approach, as in my case, uh, some resources the company already have, but you can also find like, okay, this is not expensive. This is like an accessible uh, technology implementation for this process. And yeah, I think it's really important to have the goals, the strategy, the measures, and have like a really big research on the technologies you have available. Yeah, absolutely. And and even uh, I would say also that we need to be very clever about which tendon, uh, technologies or new technologies, I mean, are accurate to the processes that we want to implement because it's not just to apply something that maybe is working for another organization, but at the end of the day, what we want is to be sure that the investment and the reinforcement that we are doing is going to have an impact in, in our customer. And I was remembering another example. 
it's a still problem some development phases in the company. But now with all that data that you have gathered, all that data that you're, you are now able to access and so on, then you can move to talk about the Digital Twins project. And basically in, in a very general way, a Digital Twin is a replica of the real environment. Let's suppose that we are talking about a cement plant. So you have a physical cement plant. Now you can replicate that cement plant on a digital environment with all that data and then you can do digital experiments that will be very near to what will be the real result if you move it to the physical plan. That's very interesting for me. Yeah, for sure. And ju just to add about digital twins is something amazing because even you have the capability to detect if something is not working well because you could run even in, in a, let's say, in a live uh, process and, and even it has this kind of capability. So at the future, maybe at the very near future, uh, some companies, for example, as Maserati, they are using also for, for this tracking about the, all the components of the car. So it is great to, to know that Semex is using for, for the entire layout of the, of the plants and how, how to improve uh, the performance, as you mentioned also. Yeah. David. Yes, I think it's important to point that the first one that Miguel said is the to be realistic in your next step goals. And the other one that Gonzalo was saying is that also when you uh, like you have these simulations, it's also important to consider all the external factors that can affect in in the new process that that you would like to to apply. So because it is important because maybe you are like experiencing this uh, new way of doing things and you think it will be perfect but you need to consider all, all the external factors that can affect and well also i would like to add the the agile uh, process or the uh, agile methodology of doing this digital transformation because sometimes we want that all the digital transformation it's complete and it's perfect so we can use it with our customers or with internal processes but the agile way of thinking or the agile methodology can let us start with some uh, short uh, I, I, I don't know how to say short like goals but uh, to attack them efficiently so you can start uh, like this continuous improvement process and at the end of the path you will have the the perfect result that you were searching but you need to start that, that's what that, that's what i would like to say you need to start and start like improving your process during the during the path um yeah i think what you say is really important like all these processes like and I think it's part of what change management entry at the like these transformation processes that you have to really understand that sometimes simulations will tell you this, but when you are applying in reality, you will have to go back to the simulation, make adjustments, and it's like a continuous uh, learning processes. And sometimes that's what the success of these digital transformation tools have that they disrupt, they have like this disrupt, disruption process because they can be learned or adjust like really easily. As you were saying, it's more agile processes to make the reparation or the, the adjustments to make them work. I want to complement regarding agile methodology. Uh, that's a very important part, I think, uh, related to digital transformation, because sometimes in general ways, when you hear the word digital transformation, you think about an application or about a technology. And yes, it's the core of some digital transformations, but also the inside part about how you are working has a big impact on your digital transformation. So uh, coming back to the agile term, time before the classical way of doing a project was through the waterfall schema, which is still used, used 
and, and it's a good model depending the project but if you are doing what miguel was saying that you need to iterate and do some adjustments and change some data then you need to do it fast and you can wait all the phases of the waterfall model so that's when you come and start this new way of working with working more agile now there's also a challenge because it's not as easy as saying no you know you have been doing this for a lot of years now you need to do it this way yeah for for sure and at the end of the day uh, there are also at least in my experience some examples about how to even merge both different methodologies depends the specific project so at, at the end uh, this kind of journey, what what uh, teach to us is that many of the solutions will be tailor-made, case by case, for specific uh, projects. Maybe something that works perfectly to improve the user experience. It it doesn't mean that the same methodology will work. I will say for uh, diminishing costs or for something different. In the past, the processes were, let's say, very methodological, but nowadays uh, we, we have more flexibility and, and an example could be something like that. So, uh, well, first of all, uh, I want to thank you again. And before to finish, I, I want to, to give you some time to, to provide something that maybe we didn't mention at the beginning. But please, I, I, I will start to ask you, David, if we could start with you. Thank you. Yes, well, just to conclude, the digital transformation process is not something that happened from just by a year of a process or two years. It's a continuous improvement process where it, you need to take into account all the internal and external uh, processes that you your company has. And it is important always, as mentioned before, to be customer centric. Uh, at the end of the day, we are trying to, to make a new solution or a new way of doing things, of doing business. But if it is not what the customer is looking for, maybe you are in the wrong path. So it, it is important that all the digital transformation uh, processes and new methodologies that you are proposing or you are thinking about to always be customer centric and always thinking in a strategic way. What, what is the next step or what is the next solution that your customer wants? And as mentioned before also, how can you add value to your customer and how can you be more profitable? I, I think that's the two Im most important things about the digital transformation. Absolutely. Thank you so much, David. And Miguel, please. Yeah, well, as a conclusion, I will say that it's really important on this a kind of processes to understand that you will sometimes have to negotiate a lot. Like as you were saying, you have to deal with old processes, facing new processes of doing things. Uh, and yeah, I think it's a long process. You have to develop like a long-term vision and you have also to communicate to the persons who will take the project that it's a long-term project. Uh, sometimes the results, you will see them like probably in five years if you are like really good at these processes, but it's long-term processes view. And yeah, like approach, approach all these change management efforts to how you can manage the human change in the, in the organization. Uh, when facing transformation processes like this. Yeah, absolutely. So, thanks so much. And, and Gonzalo, please. I will add to, to say that at the end, it's not just to do something because someone else is doing that. You really need to have that sense that David was saying that if what I'm planning to do, does it really has a purpose? Will it benefit the customer or is it just because it's the trend? And, and that, I think that's key. And the other part will be, especially for staff in corporate areas, sometimes there's a little bit a lack of congruence between what you are thinking and saying and what in reality happens. So if you are implementing new emerging technologies or emerging technologies, remember to go to the other side of the field and see that it really is working as it's supposed to work. 
Yeah, so totally agree. Uh, uh, we need to assure that what we are expecting is happening, especially because sometimes the weakest part is the most, uh, uh, and the one that is more close to the customer or to the user that we are expecting. So, and, and sometimes it's because lack of training or that something maybe is not working as, as expected. So that's a, a, a great uh, conclusion. Thank you. Thank you, Gonzalo. Thanks to everybody. And thanks again, Gonzalo, Miguel, David. Oh, thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Fernando. Thank you all. Thank you.